Well, this is the fifth of a series of shows that I call America's Outback. And so, America's Outback largely alludes to work produced within the boundaries of what we call the Great Basin. Mm -hmm. Desert um, has for the first four shows. This show I've expanded a little bit. I spent some time in Hands of Borrego um, State Park, which is in California, but it's a beautiful desert area. And several of the paintings in this show are from, from that experience. Playing there, I just got up every morning and painted. Um, and there's more paintings from Southern Nevada than I've had in past shows. So, America's Outback to me means basically the open spaces of the Intermountain West, meaning between the Rockies um, or the Wasatch Range, and mostly east of the Sierra Nevada, but starting to jump a little bit into the Sierra Nevada and south into that awesome part of California that's behind San Diego. There's some really interesting country down there. So, empty country. America's Outback is empty country. Uh, most of it is landscapes, but I do like to include some of the buildings, and I like to include some of the people. So um, there'll, there's a painting of a blackjack dealer in here, who, Nevada icon, the blackjack dealer, three in the morning. She's exhausted. She's been working all night. Her eyes are just like, like that. Um, you know, and that's part of America's Outback too. That's part of the story of America's Outback. But, but most of the work is plain air landscapes. A significant part of the work is the buildings that you find. Um, and then there's some, some pen and ink drawings of, of the people that you find. But it's not, a, it's not a Cowboys and Indians West. My West is today's West. But it includes built up landscapes, it includes people working, struggling to make a living. Uh, but I don't paint the Cowboys Indians and I don't generally do that so much. I like the wild landscape. I make art because I look at the world around me and it just excites me and I want to paint it. And I think I've been that way my whole life. And, and you have to remember that I was coming of age at a time when representational art was out of style. So I was hungry. I was hungry for influences like that. And so I like the Hudson River School artists like Thomas Moran, um, Albert Bierstadt, um, even today, I'll go into the Museum, Nevada Museum of Art, and they have an Albert Bierstadt big painting. I like their dramatic, crazy, loud stuff. So I'm in a constant state of yearning to paint. Um, there are many times when I paint every single day. Um, plain air painting, two or three times a week. Me, uh, about half the work in the show is plain air, meaning I just set up an easel there in a the moment, painted. There's nothing better, or almost nothing better than the feeling I get after I've been out, or during a time when I've been out, got a good painting going, it's all clicking, and I've lived, it's zen for me. Most of my work is landscape, plain air, um, and then I will do bigger, more ambitious pieces like that in the studio. Mm -hmm. um, a great deal of my work is architectural, and that, that sells like hotcakes. If I do a good architectural painting, it's gone. Mm. Like, I already sold them on the card. Oh, I'm, a working, I'm a working political cartoonist. And then I'd say about 10% of my work is what I would call social realism. And some of, some of the pen and ink fits into that. Maynard Dixon, who is known for his Western landscapes, also had about 10 to 20% of his work was done during the Depression, and it upset Maynard Dixon that people were so abused and cast aside in the Great Depression, 25% unemployment. So we did, painted those people, and I, I'm the same way. I have a social conscience or whatever. I care about stuff like that. Um, and I mean, not so much that I feed the homeless like some people do, but enough that I will draw them because it, it is intriguing and even irritating to me that that exists. Because I'm pretty old. And I, I, I remember in America where there wasn't homelessness. I, I, for a long time, was the president of a group called Voters for Sensible Growth. And so some of the paintings in this show, um, especially the big one behind you, says Pavement Ends. That is a romanticized version of the end of Winnemucca Ranch Road. And so some, some of my art that addresses a political issue is a little bit more subtle. And in fact, that whole show was built around the idea that we were going to do paint-ins 
which was coined by Chad Zorg, that the whole concept of a painting was coined by Chad Zorg, to go and protest the, the imminent destruction of a place, because at that time, we were still afraid, and maybe are still a little bit afraid, that the Winnemucca Ranch area was going to become part of Reno, even though it was 25 miles north of town, um, at least 20 miles from the nearest part of Reno. But because the developer bought the ranch, we changed our regional plan and said and upzoned it. And, and I fought that bitterly. In fact, I ran for mayor in 2006 for that reason. And to tell you the truth, I'm on the ballot right now for the same reason, is I'm still talking about sprawl as a mayoral candidate, but also as a voter and a citizen. And so circle back to the voter deal, not one of the other candidates in this run up to this election right now would say the sprawl word. I had no reassurance that anyone cared about it, so I jumped in to talk about it. In 2009, which was the depths of the recession, I decided that I had to refocus on my art. And I put some of the activism aside and just refocused on my art. And since then, it's been a steady uphill climb. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for, uh, for doing welcome. both art and activism. You know, You're welcome. I'm, I'm proud of the activism. I like art activism. Yeah, this is a, this is an expression of, of art activism.